All right, everyone, we start off with a slightly early day today talking about the governor of Oregon being a complete shitfuck. Uh, after more than seven weeks of nonstop rioting in Portland, uh, and, and I think sporadic problems as well in other parts of the state, if I remember correctly, after numerous assaults, hundreds of millions in property damage, vandalism, arson, attempted arson, vehicular homicide, if I remember correctly, in one case, uh, after all of this, the governor of Oregon is finally weighing in on the situation in Portland. Not because of the riots there, though, but because federal agents decided to do their fucking job and defend federal property against the fucking rioters. They broke down barricades in one building and attempted to light it on fire. They attacked another building by attempting to barricade the people that were in there inside by blocking the entrances with their garbage. They've got a lot of it, mostly in their heads. The governor comes out. I'm going to read this fucking verbatim. You won't believe how dumb this is. Terrifying for citizens, Oregon government, uh, governor reacts to Trump's invasion of Portland. This is absolutely unacceptable. This was purely a photo opportunity for political theater for the Trump administration. He's trying to distract. They only want to escalate. They want to dominate the streets. Well, uh, right now your streets are dominated by thousands of communists, Governor. That's the problem. The problem is that those people have apparently run out of private property to destroy at this point. And they've, they got bored enough so that they thought it was a good idea to, att to attack a federal building. The federal government has no choice but to defend the people inside and the property itself. It's their fucking job. If you were doing your job and these, pro these rioters had been hauled in and not immediately let go of right afterwards because you reign over an extreme far-left city in Portland as governor and because you're worried about your electoral chances should you uh, issue any form of crackdown because you've decided to cede your entire state to rioting communists and thugs the feds had to step in because there's nowhere no one else to defend the building it, it, it's like imagine this scenario this is like what happened with Ken and Karen there in St. Louis the only reason that they were on their lawn defending their property with weapons was because they were told explicitly, they were told beforehand, there's a mob coming to your neighborhood. They're going to march through because it's, I guess they're trying to get to the mayor's house or something, which is funny because the mayor like <laughs> lets them run roughshod over everything and they still bite the hand that feeds them. They did this in Seattle, you'll remember, right before they dismantled Chaz. By the way, those are totally coincidental, uh, not connected at all. Ken and Karen called the police and they were told nobody's going to be coming you can call the police if you want but don't expect a response we're too th we're stretched too thin we're not allowed to respond there's not enough of us right now there are too many rioters they decided to arm up as any reasonable person would guess what their property didn't get destroyed their property didn't get ransacked plenty of other properties in the area did including the front gate of their own neighborhood but nobody wants to mess with a dude holding an ar-15 now do they if, if somebody else were responding, the feds wouldn't have to get involved. It is, it is, it is horrible that the, uh, the Oregon governor is so dumb. She's claiming that her citizens are being terrorized by the feds. The feds are operating within a one-block fucking radius of a federal building specifically because of this. It's like last night when the commies had their propaganda piece there with the dude in the Navy sweater getting hit by the police with a baton and then sprayed down with mace. That was not a protester. The fact that he was standing there is not pertinent to the situation. A riot had been declared, tear gas had been deployed to disperse people, and he didn't disperse. When that happens, if you are in, in, in a group, whether you're protesting or, or already rioting, and it's declared a riot, and sometimes, of course, I would side with the people protesting because a riot is not always a riot just because it's been declared. When people have actively attempted to burn a federal building to the ground, and are issuing verbal threats to the feds that are there. It becomes a riot. It's lawful to disperse it. And if a person is standing there like an idiot, not dispersing, they're probably going to get hit. That's a risk that this, this moron took at that time. These are riots. They've been riots the whole time. It's frustrating that the legacy media will literally report on people burning a Wendy's to the ground, attacking a camera crew, and refer to them as protesters. They're not protesting. They don't even have a grievance. These people in most cases don't have a grievance. Most of the people that you see out there throwing bricks and punches at the moment don't know who George Floyd is. They don't even know half the time why they're there. They're there for a smash and grab. 
They're there for violence for violence's sake, or they're there for political extremism. They're not there because of police brutality. It's, this isn't going to do anything about police brutality anyway. The governor of Oregon is pretending the people of Portland were so terrorized by the feds. Again, operating within a one block radius, giving lawful orders to people because my police are too cucked to do anything. Because I refuse to act. This is what the governor should have said. I'm really, really sorry to the people of Portland that I let your city burn for the last seven weeks. Yeah, I'm sorry that I let the, the situation metastasize to the point where the feds had to actually get involved. They're saying, well, these unmarked federal agents in unmarked vans are kidnapping people. No, they're not. They are lawfully entitled to detain people that are part of rioting and question them. They're trying to figure out if any of these people is carrying a fucking pipe bomb. That's what they're doing. It's not unlawful. When they say, well, you're just a bootlicker, you're not a real libertarian, what are you talking about, dude? Rioting is not protected under the Constitution. Burning buildings to the ground, smashing store windows, assaulting people, those are not protests. If these people were sitting around singing Kumbaya and the feds just randomly decided to start shooting them with rubber bullets, nobody would oppose them and they would they'd call them protests. They wouldn't oppose the protesters. But these aren't protests now, are they? You can't possibly claim that these rioting, looting hordes of, of, of thugs that are going around randomly attacking people and looting businesses have anything to do with police brutality or any form of protest, because they don't. And, and under U.S. law, including the Constitution as the supreme law of the land, there's a protection for protests. There's a protection for public assembly, but there's no protection for riots. I will once again as well say this. It is interesting to me that all of these moron governors and mayors and so-called protesters a couple of months ago had a real big problem with anyone who wanted to assemble publicly. You're going to kill grandma. How dare these people in Michigan go to the state house and protest lockdowns? But BLM gets a pass. In New York, you can't assemble publicly right now in, in considerable groups. Hell, you can barely go and do anything in New York right now, unless you're BLM. De Blasio literally giving a pass to BLM to conduct assemblies in New York City. No other group getting such a pass. It's unconstitutional, but somehow it's stuck. These people are going with the narrative that Trump is causing tyranny in the United States. No, Trump, Trump arguably uh, uh, didn't respond early enough, with the exception of in D.C., which is kind of necessary as the nation's capital. By and large, the feds haven't done jack shit. They waited seven weeks. No, what happened is that these idiots emboldened by state and local governments that refuse to act, refuse to imprison people in, on, on the surface, and number two, often let them go immediately, even if they're guilty of felonies, violent felonies, people assault with a deadly weapon. Well, we're going to let you out because reason, says the prosecutor. Those people have been emboldened, and they've decided to attack federal targets now. And they're quickly going to learn that that's a no-no because the federal government will actually do something about it. Go ahead and keep detaining these people. Most of these people are guilty of violent insurrection anyway. They should be in prison for the next 10, 20 years. Oh, but that's tyranny. I love it when they compare them to the Hong Kong protesters. No, the people in Hong Kong are protesting against a government that wants to do exactly the same sort of thing that many of these leftist rioters want to do. A government that essentially depersons people and disappears them if you disagree. That cracks down on free speech. That disarms people that does throw people in prison for their political beliefs. Those are beliefs that are held by the Marxists. Those aren't the things that the, uh, the, the main line of uh, society believes in. Since when has Trump actually acted like a tyrant? I keep hearing about how tyrannical, evil, and dictatorial Trump is, and it takes him seven weeks to respond uh, beyond Washington, D.C. to these riots. That's not what a dictator does. A dictator doesn't attempt to tell you you should have more guns either. Dictators don't argue against corporate censorship by billionaires. He's the opposite. He's in many social senses more libertarian than we've seen, especially from the fucking Republican Party. Usually they want to do the Jesus, Jesus thing. A famous meme on this channel, the Jesus, Jesus thing. Well, Jesus says Harry Potter is going to make your kid into a witch. So we've got to ban it. 20 years later, of course, leftists are the ones trying to ban Harry Potter. Oh my God, Harry Potter is not transgendered. It's a big problem. 
These are riots, not protests. The governor of Oregon should just step down. If these people are not willing to govern, if they're not willing to do their job, they're not letting the cops do their job or, or giving them the resources in some cases to succeed in doing so, to the point where federal property is now endangered, let the feds get involved. Perfectly constitutional, perfectly fine. The real bootlickers are all the Bernie 2020 morons on Twitter r shitting on themselves in a death spiraling echo chamber about how we need more billionaire corporate censorship and we need to disarm people and everyone should have to wear a chastity belt and by God, we should be able to burn your store to the ground in a violent rage over goddamn fucking nothing. So many more lives have been lost as the result of the activities of BLM and Antifa over the last seven or eight weeks. So many more lives have been lost from that than police brutality in the whole year. And how, what's the death toll from this? There was the probe, attempted murder in Provo. There was the eight-year-old in Atlanta that got shot by BLM. Multiple people in Chaz. How many people died there? Wasn't it like three shootings and two deaths in Chaz over the course of a couple of fucking weeks? What a peace zone. The idiot mayor of Seattle declaring, oh, this is an insurrection of peace. Trump needs to stop talking about it. Everything's fine here. The day after a bunch of people protest on her uh, Karen front lawn, though, all of a sudden it's bad and you have to dismantle Chaz. Basically, she's a nimbius. Not in my backyard. You can go and burn my city to the ground, but don't get near my special gated community, my upper scale uh, neighborhood. Don't come protest near me. I'll let you burn things. Just don't bite the hand that feeds you. That's what this idiot governor's doing. If the protest, if protesters so-called showed up to have a drum circle around her mansion, I bet she'd be singing a fucking different tune. And it'd be really, really funny. It was funny this well. Uh, they're only doing this because these are people who are on the left and who are like black and stuff, which is not true. Antifa is overwhelmingly white. Uh, and they're like comparing them to the org, the uh, Michigan militias there. Well, they showed up with assault rifles and they were treated with more deference. Yeah, they didn't try to burn the state house to the ground. They didn't start throwing rocks. <laughs> By and large, they just stood there. There was some yelling and that was about as violent as it got. That's protest. It's lawful. Perfectly within the law, perfectly protected under the First Amendment. Had they started shooting, it would have been a riot and murder. It would not have been a protest anymore, or an order to disperse, and probably mass killing would have ensued, uh, and it would have been a big problem. But that didn't happen now, did it? It's amazing how all those roid-raging Gadsden flag wavers with those big, scary sporting rifles are so much more lawful than all of these little Cretans roaming around in the streets smashing out windows really really funny how that occurs now well, these are rioters and the governor of oregon is is crazy basically that's about all peace out